guys and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another episode of Fossil Friday. In today's video we're going to be talking about the Ediacaran geological time period. Now this is a much older geological time period than I usually reference and this goes all the way back about 600 million years ago and believe it or not there are fossils in this time period as well. So this is the Precambrian and it's the latest geological time period within the Precambrian and it comes just before the Cambrian time period. So some of you may be familiar with the Cambrian explosion which is where there was this huge explosion of life in the fossil record that is very very important but there is this time period just before it which is full of some rather interesting things. So I was quite fortunate enough to visit the Charnwood Geopark in the UK but there are lots of localities around the world where we can see fossils and assemblages from this time period which are all soft bodied so it's quite amazing to see them preserved. So the Ediacaran time period it's from about 541 million years ago to about 635 million years ago so that's kind of how long the period spans for. Now with geological time each geological time period has a different amount of million years associated with it. So you may have seen one of the lovely geological time charts. Um, now this is constantly updating and changing but this is the latest one so you can kind of see just how complex it is. Now we find fossils within most of these time periods but today we're focusing on the one all the way down here which is the Ediacaran. So I thought it'd be quite interesting to kind of go quite far back in geological time and dive into an era that you might not be that familiar with. Now the organisms that we find from the Ediacaran, they're very unusual. So they're all soft bodied, they don't have hard parts, and it's the first examples we have of multicellular organisms that we can then kind of build upon. So a lot of the forms we see are frond-like forms, quilted forms, circular forms, and there's some very famous Ediacaran fossils that include Dickinsonia, Sprugina, Charnia, and there's also been a recent discovery where a brand new species was discovered at Charnwood Geopark, and they are home to some of these spectacular Ediacaran fossils. So it was really incredible to actually see a 600 million year old fossil in situ and see the difference to the fossils I usually find, which are much, much younger. So I think the key thing with Ediacaran fossils is that they are soft bodied and a lot of them are just kind of halos of the creatures and so some of them are a lot better preserved than others and some can be very delicate and so in turn they're so key to science because they are those kind of first examples of multicellular life so the way you actually preserve them and study them is very interesting. So a lot of the time these fossils need certain light levels and certain angles to actually make out where the indentations are, like what do these creatures actually look like? And that's where all these special techniques come in. So I'll talk about the new species first and then I'll talk a little bit about how they actually kind of study them and what processes are involved in that respect. But Chalma did announce that they found a new species called the Aruralumina Attenborough and was named after the one and only David Attenborough because he actually grew up nearby the location this fossil was found. They believe it's the earliest known animal predator ever to be found and it's related to the group that includes corals and jellyfish. So the name translates from Latin to dawn lantern and that is due to the shape of the fossil it almost resembles lanterns. It's believed to be a predator because the structure resembles that that might have had stinging cells on their tentacles, so it was presumed that they would have caught prey within these, such as small planktonic animals. So the fossil you can see consists of a pair of forking tubes, and this would have been where the animals lived, and the earliest such structure to be recorded of its kind. So this fossil has been dated 560 million years ago and this was done using zircon crystals in the rocks. So when it comes to studying these fossils there's a few techniques that can be used to make it a little bit easier. So like I said certain times of day and lighting really help kind of study the fossil. So actually what they tend to do is they tend to take a replica of the surface. So in order to do this they have to prep the surface coated in a special silicon, take a cast, mould the cast, and then they have a replica of the rock face. But the way I just said it makes it sound so easy, but because these are such important fossils, so much care has to be taken to A, not damage the fossil, and B, to ensure that you actually get the fossil. So a lot of the bedding planes, they're not horizontal, that would be too easy. They're actually at an angle. So you have to find a way to almost make the silicon not drip off when you're trying to cast it. 
So it's a very complicated procedure to actually get a cast of these fossils, but it then allows scientists and researchers to actually study them properly in a lab where they can then take artificial light and bring these fossils to life. So it's really amazing to see, and you can see on some of these softwares here, that they can run artificial light around them and light it up as if, you know, you're seeing it like the sun would. So it just allows the fossils to be studied in a lot more detail without the limits of the sun rising and falling and, you know, weather and all of that. So there are ways around it, but it's a lot more complicated than I've made it. And casts can be, you know, looked at all over the world by different people and they're a lot more accessible as well. So there will be a cast of it at the Natural History Museum, or I believe it's at the Natural History Museum. So look out for that, um, which will be pretty cool to see. But the Ediacaran biotope is known for its kind of complex multicellular organisms that have no hard parts, whereas the, the period that comes after it is known for the Cambrian explosion, where you've got this explosion of complex life that does have hard parts, including shells and skeletons. So I'll save the Cambrian explosion for another video, but perhaps it would be quite useful to make videos on each of the time periods to kind of separate how geological time works and what actually went on or what we think went on in each of those time periods. But that's all I got for you guys today. I really hoped you enjoyed learning a little bit about the Ediacaran time period. It's a very interesting one and one that I've not really spoken about before. So I do hope you enjoyed today's video. Please like and subscribe if you did and hopefully I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.